Private Pile, I think we finally found something that you do well. Sir, yes, sir. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Last Epoch in my new boot camp series. And what do I have for you today? Advanced crafting. We're going to go through mirroring, sealing, hunting rare affixes, and of course, building legendary items. Now, if you haven't seen my basic video, Crafting 101, that's going to be linked first link in the description and at the end of this video. So if you want to watch advanced before basic, hey, totally fine. That is up to you. And I figured why not start with legendaries first, show you how to build the best items in the game. They kind of have this reddish hue to them. All right. And to build a legendary item, you need three things. You need a dungeon key. You need a unique item that has legendary potential and you need an exalted item that has four affixes. Let me just show you really quick. There are three dungeon keys currently in the game. You have Soulfire Bastion, you have Lightless Arbor, and you have Temporal Sanctum. Temporal Sanctum, this key on screen right now, is the key you need that will get you into the dungeon to make a legendary item. Now, it is pretty simple, and we'll go to the dungeon in just a second, okay? If you beat the dungeon boss, you get you get access to the Eternity Cache where you can create a legendary item. And of course, we're going to make one together. Now, quick little tip, okay? These keys, you can right click on them. Okay, let me show you. Right click on Soulfire Bastion. The map automatically pops up and shows you Soulfire Bastion with the red little door for the dungeon. All right. Click on Lightless Arbor. Right click. Boom, pulls up Lightless Arbor and the little dungeon. And just like I said, right click on Temporal Sanctum and it'll take us to the Temporal Sanctum, which we are going to go to right now. And there's a lot more that comes to Legendary. OK, so let's get over there. And this is the entrance to the Temporal Sanctum. When you click on the door. All right, you need to add your key. We're going to put that right there and we're going to enter the Sanctum. But first, we got to pick which one we're going into. Do you want Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, or Tier 4? And it shows you the increased enemy damage and health, but you will have much better enemy drops depending on which level you go in. But since we're building a legendary item, okay, you need to look at this box on the left. As you see, at Tier 1, the Eternity Cache will accept unique items up to level 50. At Tier 2, it'll be level 65. At Tier 3, level 75. And at Tier 4, any level. Okay? So what you need to do, and I've done this multiple times, you go in to make your Legendary, but you didn't pick the right one, is you need to look at your unique. So we are going to be making a Legendary Smoke Weaver. Okay? So this unique item is 52. The item level is 52, which means we cannot make a legendary items on tier one because it's only level 50 and down. We need to enter the sanctum at tier two and we are going to enter the dungeon. OK, I'm going to beat this. I'll see you at the end. OK, so we have now beat the Temporal Sanctum boss. And we are going to go right here to the Eternity Cache. OK, now this is how it works. Click on it. We are going to take our unique item that has legendary potential and we are going to put that on the left side. And then we're going to take our exalted item again. Exalted means it has a tier six or tier seven affix. And we're going to put that on the right side. OK, now what this means is that since this unique has two legendary potential, two random affixes from this dagger are going to transfer to it. Now, obviously, we hope that critical strike multiplier and more specifically, 52 melee physical damage transfer over to it. OK. But 
Who knows? We can get the suffixes and not the prefixes. We have no idea. Obviously, the dagger I am using is really good. It's got a tier 7 melee physical damage and a high roll on it. All right. So we are going to seal the cash. It is now sealed. We are then going to push D, which is going to transfer us through time. And we are going to click on the cash. And our legendary item has now been made. Let's see what two affixes we got to transfer over. And we got critical strike multiplier and 14 health on melee hit. So unfortunately, we did not get the tier seven affix to move over, but we did get the critical strike multiplier. So basically we added a tier five and a tier five. So we added 10 tiers to this item. And now we have a legendary dagger. Now that you know how to make a legendary item, let's switch gears and I'm going to talk to you about sealing affixes. Then we will move to actually creating uniques. That's going to be a lot of fun. OK, we are going to shift right click and move our wand into the forge. Now, yesterday I showed you how to use chaos. This is a way to roll the dice and hopefully you have a chance of getting the affix you are looking for. I literally use chaos all the time, but there is a better way if you have them. So again, I'm just going to showcase right now. I don't want this spell critical strike. I want spell damage. Let's hope I don't get spell damage. Nope, no spell damage. Nope, no spell ding damage. Dang it. This item is now bricked. It doesn't make sense. Elemental damage with necrotic damage. All right, let's get rid of this. Man, I wish there was a better way. There is. Now let's transfer our two-handed sword into the forge. Now, this melee cult. Let's say I didn't want melee cold. Let's say I wanted crit multiplier. Okay, I want crit multiplier on this sword. Instead of chaosing it and just praying that we get the affix we want, why don't we just remove the affix? We're going to go right here. Click on Glyph of Despair. Okay, click on Glyph of Despair. We've got the correct affix selected and we are going to upgrade it. And bam, that affix is now gone. It's actually moved down here. So this item will always have a tier one melee cold. Now I can click on this. I can type crit multiplier, put it in there. We're going to click on Glyph of Hope to hopefully retain our forging potential. And we are going to craft, 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 craft. Just like that, we took our melee cold off. And we moved it down and now we have crit strike multiplier with our cold damage exactly what we wanted. All right. What else do I want on here? We will put less crit. And the item is now bricked. Unfortunately, that last one took 15 forging potential. But the said item right now, tier five, tier five. That's tier 10 plus a tier one, tier three and tier six. We now have another tier 20 sword. Okay, happens that we just keep making somehow tier 20 items over and over again. But you see how I sealed that affix. Now, we do have more to talk about when it comes to sealing, because when you go to seal an affix, all right, the tier matters. If I tried to seal this tier one, I think it's like 100% it is going to move down. But every tier higher, you lose chance. So if you're trying to see seal a tier two, a tier three, a tier four, you have not as good a chance of that happening. Let me show you. We're going to try and seal this chance to find potions, and it's tier three upgrade affix. So we got really lucky in this case, and we were able to seal this tier three affix. I'm having really good luck on these videos. Now I can go spell damage. And the item is now bricked. OK, so our. our so we're not perfect, see, so the item's still worthless, but we sealed that tier three. That's that was that was pretty good. 
All right, let's try another one. Let's get this dagger right here, and I'm going to try and seal this tier three again. And we sealed another tier three affix. Okay, okay, well, I guess I'm showing you what is possible. All right, we want melee physical damage. Mm, we'll take crit. And the item is toast. Tier 5, tier 5, tier 6, and then sealed tier 3. Okay, so not as much luck on the last two items. Obviously, we have a whole nother one available. But the whole point of this is I'm trying to showcase that if you have an affix somewhere that you don't want a chaos roll, if you have Glyphs of Despair, you can simply just pull it down right here and then put whatever you want in its place. Okay? I think I have made my point known. Now what we're going to do is create some uniques by using Rune of Ascendance. All right, what a Rune of Ascendance does is it takes a base item, in this case a scepter, and it upgrades it to, in this case, a unique hazel root. I'm going to see if we could find a claim. That's what we're looking for. The items that I'm actually using right now. There it is. Literally my second try. We pulled my end game scepter with legendary pot potential. Well, let's keep going for the fun of it. We pulled two of them. Hazel, come on. Let's now we now I want something different. I guess that's an easy one. There we go. Now we got a frozen ire. So a lot of times I'll hear people saying, man, dude, I've been looking for this unique forever. How did you find one? Uh, maybe I didn't find it. Maybe I just crafted it. Dude, the scepter I am using right now we just created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. But that first one is the only one that has legendary potential on it. Okay. You now know how to seal and you now know how to upgrade regular items to uniques. And by the way, the rarity. So if you got common magic or rare, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a scepter, it'll turn into a scepter. As long as it's a body armor, it turns into a body armor. As long as it's a shield, it turns into a shield. It's just kind of a fun way to get uniques if you need them. My last tip and trick for advanced crafting is just how to find these affixes. Aaron, this is great, but I never find the shards I need. Well, let me quickly throw out some items for you. And you will see that these all have the same color. They are a very bright purple and you can literally pick any color you want. Inside of my loot filter, I have right here, all items with these nine affixes on them will drop with this color. And these aren't actually items that I am normally looking for. All I care about is the shards. So what you wanna do, pull up your forge, and you just transfer your items over and you just shatter them. And right now I'm looking for hybrid health. So I got no hybrid health. I got one hybrid health. I got one hybrid health. Maybe I got two there. I don't know. I'm going too fast. One. This one I'm looking for void cleave. Got it. This one I'm looking for level of erasing strike. Didn't get it. And this one I'm looking for hybrid health. Didn't get it. The point is, is that when you shatter these items, you have a chance to pull the shards off to you. And you're gonna be using shatters all the time. That was just some skills I was looking for and trying to stack up hybrid health. Now, you will notice that when you do this a lot, you will start running out of shatters. So at my last tip, every single time you go to a vendor, yes. ensure you buy the shatters, okay? 
It does refresh fairly often. So buy these and then transfer them in to your crafting materials. Hunting for shards. Yes, they will fall on the ground, but the best way is just add it to your loot filter and then shatter the item. That's it. You now know how to create uniques. You know how to seal affixes. You know how to hunt for those rare affixes, and you know how to create a legendary item. If you watch Basics of Crafting and now Advanced of Crafting, I think you're going to be good to go. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out. <laughs>